Hello and welcome to this next video in the Kinetic Data Platform training series. My name is Derek Larson and in this video we're going to talk about routines. Now routines, I think as we've mentioned before, are repeatable processes that can be used by any tree in any source. So when we look at the list of routines here we can see that they really just have a name and an ID. As we looked at with trees earlier, the very first choice you make with a tree is its source. That's not so with a routine. So with a routine, it's dependent upon you to create the inputs and outputs for the routine itself. But just like trees, there, so there's three different ways to create them. Uh, so the first two we're going to talk about but not demonstrate. Just like a tree, you can import a routine from another environment. You can clone a routine and make some changes to the one that you've just created. And here again, just like trees, we have an export function and routines are exported as XML. And the last way you can create a routine, the way we're gonna do it, is just like when we did the tree, is we're gonna make a new routine. So we'll open up that dialog here. The most important piece for a routine is of course the name and the definition ID. So we're gonna create a routine that's a very, very simple example of sending an email. So we'll just call this uh, simple message send. Now your definition ID is going to be set up for you and we're gonna append at the beginning here, a routine and an underscore. So you have the options to make changes here. The thing I always recommend for folks is to version their routine. So I'm just gonna put a version one on here. So in case we wanna keep that same name but update it at some point in the future, it's very easy to do that and very simple for anybody who's using our system. Uh, just like a tree, we have a status option here. We start as active, so be careful with that. Uh, inactive, if you'd like to take it out of service or make some changes. And then again, paused, if you know it's uh, some, maybe some of its internal handlers are going to be uh, not available, you can just pause the routine and, and save yourself all those error messages that are generated. And just like trees, we have a process owner email. Uh, if there's an error in the routine, an email with the stack trace of the error and any other information we can get is sent to the process owner here. And of course, there's some notes uh, in case someone else needs to work on this later on or understand what your thoughts were when you created it. Every routine should be put into a category so that it can be used within the builder. Uh, we're just going to put ours into the handy messaging category here. Uh, without it being in a category, it's not going to be available to select when we're working on our tree. So that's kind of the basics of a routine. The next piece we want to look at here is what you're going to use as you're working with the routine. So we have inputs and outputs. This is where you're going to see the different parameters and pieces available when the routine is added to a tree. And then this is the information that we get to use while we're working inside the routine. So we have an email one, so we're just going to do some of the basic email fields here. So we'll click on add, we'll do uh, two, oops, sorry, it's my terrible typing. Um, we don't have a default value for this, we'll put in a description of send email two, and we'll make this one uh, required. And then we click on add again, and we keep on keep on going here. So let's just uh, roll through a couple of easy ones here. Um, if we're using your, your KinOps system, everything needs to come from Wally at KinOps.io. And then we'll do the, the last couple here of a subject. And let me just scroll this up a little bit. And a body. Okay. Uh, obviously, they probably all should be required, but we're just kind of uh, doing some demonstrations here. Now, the output here, I don't know if an email is a great one for an output, but we'll say we'll get a, um, a message ID back as an output. All right, so we're all set with our inputs and our outputs to our routine. So create workflow kind of gives us the uh, usage or the the basics of our routine here. I can see that everything looks good. Um, here, if we had this in uh, 
in use. I could see usage and then any activity that's going on. We don't really have that yet. So usage would be any trees or other routines that use our routine. And so let's get out in the builder and show you what that looks like. All right, so it looks really just like any other tree. So first thing I wanna do is start adding functionality to it. We'll click on the plus sign to the start node. And uh, I'm gonna use a very uh, a simple kind of a cheat here. I'm gonna use a system node called, oops, called an echo node. This is really just kind of a, a blank node that takes an input and gives it back an output. Just something so I don't have to spend too much time with other ones. Uh, for you and so we'll just give this um, a quick name of message and we'll want a complete connector from our start node and then next so this is really where I wanted to show you what um, is really different between a routine and a tree so with a routine we didn't have a source so we don't have a big list of all of those pieces that are going to be added to that but what we do have here are these four options. So information uh, about the source, there really isn't gonna be a whole lot there. We'll take a look at the system. We can pull in some information about the run that we came from, but you know that's oftentimes not used much either. Um, I don't have any results from other, other uh, nodes yet, but I do have this tree input. If we look at that, here are those four inputs that we created when we created the routine. So we'll just add one of them here so I can have one. And so if we were adding this into some kind of, say, like our simple uh, uh, SMTP email send, I could move those fields from, uh, from the inputs into the required fields in the, the SMTP handler, and that would be just fine. So I'm gonna click on finish here you can get the idea of the difference with our inputs between routines and trees. And so there's one other thing that's very different uh, between a routine and a tree is that in a tree, we know where we're processing and we know where we're going. From a routine, we're expected to be called from a, uh, some other tree or routine. So we have to have a way to get back. And that's a special system handler. We'll pull it up here. Yeah, tree return. So this, I'll give it a better name here, will take us back into whatever tree, whether it's a routine or another tree that called us. And it really, it just has that output that we created. So we created an output for our routine called message ID. So it wants the output to send back to that tree that we came from. So here I can now get results. We'll get the result of the message node. Here you can see the at results from what node from message, what's it called? It's called output and set that up. And so that's a really, really basic uh, routine that you can uh, use. It gives you kind of covers just the, uh, the functionality of a routine itself. The one other thing that I wanted to show you is that you can certainly call a routine from a routine. So we'll just say, so here's my simple message send again, and I could call that within my routine. So I could recursively call a routine until some value is met and then stop calling it and finally return back to my calling original tree. Uh, it's, a, it's a very powerful um, option. Uh, but it's not um, certainly not required, but I just wanted to make sure that you saw that that was something that was available to you. Anyway, so that's going to finish us up for routines. Thanks for uh, sticking with us, and we hope to see you in another video.